This is skin lecture number one, and this is going to get you started on some of the details of the layers of the skin. First of all, we're going to go through uh, some simple language on what is the function of the skin or integumentary system. You can uh, read along, protect against mechanical bumps, protect against chemicals, You've already learned how your skin is involved in protecting against dehydration. We're going to learn quite a bit about UV radiation and how the skin tries to protect you. Also, bacterial invasion, protecting against bacteria getting into the body. So those are the protection functions of the skin. There's a few other things that the skin's very important uh, for doing. Temperature regulation, we kind of touched on this at the beginning of the year with homeostasis. Also, the skin aids in vitamin D production. What you drink and say a carton of milk is some vitamin D, but it needs to be activated um, through the role of the skin. The skin is a mini excretory system. Excretory means excrete. You might think of excretion as your digestive system or your kidneys but also your skin excretes things through sweat. Finally, sensation. Inside the skin, we, we uh, get a sense of this with homeostasis. Inside the skin are a lot of receptors and, which send messages to your uh, nervous system to sense the world around you. Next screen. There are two main layers of the skin, and you probably see three, three uh, boxes on this page. However, um, the two main layers of the skin are the epidermis and dermis. So uh, those are, by definition, layers of the skin. We're also going to include, not as an official layer of the skin, but we're going to study hypodermis, or subcutaneous layer, and then also some accessory structures like hair, nails. They're not really skin um, technically, but they're accessories. They go along with, they're in the same area of the skin. If you get your diagram from your binder, I would like you to label the epidermis and dermis. Those would be the top two layers of the skin on the left. The hypodermis, you can come back to this and label it or or even look at your book in order to uh, get your labels done. Then if you go to the right side of the diagram, there are two layers of the epidermis that we're going to look at in the next, um, in the next lecture, especially in part of this lecture, the stratum corneum and the stratum basal. These are two layers of the epidermis that we'll be looking at next. Uh, to look at the epidermis as an overview, basically the cells in the bottom or, or underside of the epidermis are newer cells and they're continually doing mitosis and that's how you get new skin. The cells in the upper or outer epidermis, the ones that you see on the outside of your body are actually dead or dying and, and eventually they just flake off the body. There are about seven layers of the epidermis in your book. And these seven layers are about 25 layers thick and average. We're only going to consider two out of the seven layers. We're not going to memorize all these stratums. They all, are, they all have the first name of stratum. We're only going to do the, t the outermost or upper layer and the lowest layer. So that's an overview of the epidermis. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tackle the outermost, the stratum corneum, the outermost or, or outside most part of the epidermis. This, this section is about 10 to 15 cells thick. Now, a tissue is a group of cells that performs a, a particular function. The type of cell or tissue, the cells together, are called stratified and squamous. And I have a picture of a brick wall because all of these cells the, in the stratum corneum are very flat and they're in layers, kind of like bricks, only they're not quite regular 
regularly um, shaped like a brick would be. Some other characteristics. We say that the, the stratum corneum is avascular. The prefix a means without. Vascular means blood vessels. So there are no blood vessels in the stratum corneum. So if there's no blood, the cells are dying because they aren't getting oxygen and glucose. Also, they, uh, they lose their nuclei, and the cytoplasm gets replaced with a protein called keratin, and that makes the epidermis more waterproof. A little bit more about the stratum corneum. You lose water. What you commonly call dry skin is water coming out of these cells and um, out from between these cells. And the um, one common remedy is to put some moisturizer on top of your stratum corneum. When you apply uh, moisturizer, basically what it does is it just seals. It seals the outside and it prevents further water loss. Also moisturizers, some ladies like moisturizers because the cells that are kind of flaking off your, the, the cells in the stratum corneum that you lose, the moisturizer makes the skin kind of lay down and have a more uniform appearance. That's why a moisturizer can make the skin appear smoother. Some of your natural lipids moisturize your skin, your stratum corneum also, and it's kind of interesting that they actually have a slight antibacterial quality. The lipids have a, a substance in them that fight bacteria. Sometimes you hear about exfoliants, and somebody might use, say, something a little rough on their skin, or might use a, a liquid cleanser to exfoliate their skin. What that does is it removes some of the flaking cells in the stratum corneum that are just barely on barely hanging on. It kind of speeds up um, those cells falling off and therefore the skin would have a more smoother uniform look as it as it reflects light. 